Hey guys, me again, Aaron. I just wanted to uh, thank you guys for watching my Porsche engine removal video for the 986. And I just wanted to do a quick follow-up video. Just kind of a recap of the whole process, try to answer some questions that you might have. I did not use any special tools. Well, unless you consider a lift a special tool, which was super helpful. Um, but it took me two and a half days, essentially, to get this thing out. But most of that time was spent researching, uh, looking things up, and filming the process. So after having done it once, um, I bet that I could take this thing out in about six hours uh, fairly easily, I think. Well, you know, all it is is nuts, bolts, and some connectors. There really isn't, you know, a whole lot to it, just disconnecting a bunch of things and getting it out of the car. But after going from no experience with this, just doing some research, spending a couple days getting it out, I've gone from knowing nothing about it to probably being in the top half percent of people in the world that know about engine removals for the Porsche Boxster. So, hey, that's kind of cool. The hardest part of the whole thing was getting the exhaust out, which you guys didn't get to see because I have an exhaust removal video. But on this particular one, uh, it's the nuts. You can see that uh, these studs are a little shorter than you've seen before. And that is because um, the nuts were so bad on there, we had to use a cutoff wheel and cut them off. And actually the top one, on each side, they welded this onto the other piece. There wasn't even a nut, it was just a weld. And the same thing on uh, this one, except for this one, uh, they had a bolt and a nut going through here and they welded that on, so cut that off. So to reinstall these things, what we're gonna do is knock out the studs here and we're gonna use a bolt with a hex head on the back and a nut to reattach them. So a few things uh, that I tried to mention along the way of the removal video, for example, is this is one of the O2 sensor connectors that I disconnected from right here uh, because I thought you know, that this was connected to, I don't know what I thought it was connected to, uh, but I thought it needed to come off of there, but it does not obviously, because it is attached to the wiring harness, which comes out with the car. So. Uh, you can leave that and bolt it on there, and before I reinstall it, while well, it's obviously easy to reach, I will go ahead and reattach it. All right, I know another recommendation was to not disconnect this from here, but also disconnect it from down here. And now that it is out, I can actually look down in here, and this was our oil fill tube. And right next to that is the connection. So would be kind of tough to get your hand down there while wow, this was still in the car I think but it does look like it has one of those uh, buttons kind of like the fuel lines did where you push the button in and then just pull the connection off so um, yeah that is probably the way to go if you can reach your hand down in there and do that I also want to measure this table, and it is just a hair under 20 inches wide. It was really a really good size to set this thing on because there's just enough clearance here with the headers installed on each side where they are, you know, lower than the bottom of the engine itself. So you don't have to put any weight on them. They stick out the side. And uh, if I needed to remove them, I think I might still have access. I don't even know. Um, yeah, maybe could, well, I don't know. It would be tough to remove them now with it sitting on here. But with them on, I still have access to get the cam covers off, which is the main goal of what I'm going to do. Uh, yep. So we've got access. Um, the transmission, of course, you could remove separately. Uh, it might be easier to take that off while it's still up there and attached. You just need a separate transmission jack to get it down. 
And depending on what I find when I start taking this thing apart, I might have to separate these two anyway. So coming back to this old cam cover, right up here, we have our first big hole and then we have a big hole right over here. So I'm still super curious as to what caused those. If you guys have any guesses, may leave a comment, let me know what you think happened and uh, we can see if anybody guessed right, if we can figure it out. So yeah, the first one is essentially right here, this big chunk. So the only one of these that I've worked on is a five chain before. So this is gonna be a three chain. I guess. Um, and the other big hole is right here behind where this uh, spark plug wire is. So, gosh. Um, the guy that sold me this car told me he only replaced three parts once this happened to try to get it fixed. That's the state it's in right now. He replaced this cover. He replaced the pump and he replaced the chain sprocket that is attached to this pump that, if you saw in the other video, was snapped. Um, I have heard that the cam covers are not interchangeable, that they are machined to match the cam and possibly something else. I don't really know much about that and I tried to Google it a little bit today. Didn't find a lot of definitive information, um, but he said that he matched the numbers on here, which I don't know if it's this number or what he was matching. Uh, I'll take a look at the old one here in a minute and see if I can see, but um, I'm gonna guess that that's not good enough. So anybody that knows about this, definitely please leave some comments and give us some knowledge on that. I wanted to take a closer look at the back of the busted one here, and I can see where the pump is. Uh, that is, I assume, uh, scratching from the chain. Some gouges in the metal from the chain rubbing on it before it actually ripped a huge piece out. Um, and the other kind of grooves here, they look fairly smooth where the cam was. I don't really see anything there. And around here, I don't see any other big wear mark signs or anything. Um, hmm. So this is the most confusing hole to me. So anyway, I'm gonna start uh, dismantling this thing and of course making a video of it for you. But uh, if this thing is not repairable, uh, you know, it's gonna be for sale. So any interested takers bid now. And additionally, if you have a replacement option for me, let me know.